Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome back in uh, Radio Italia Uno da Leide. My name is Simone and uh, we are in the um, Agri Adventures uh, program. So uh, today we are out of the studio. We are recording uh, in the um, ICC, which is the Innovation Collaboration Center for the Adelaide University. University SA. University SA. Yep. Ooh, okay. Thank you for uh, thank you for this um, specify this difference. Thank it's, you, Pascal. It's okay. And uh, so today we are here because uh, we would like to speak about hospitality um, with uh, Pascal. So Pascal, I met him in one of, uh, or uh, I think it was a meetup or... Uh... Actually, uh, the first, first we met um, was the first meetup we did with the Caesar visa holders. Um, oh yes, yep. you're right, perfect. That was a really good beer testing experience. And uh, so, um, when we met, obviously, we figured it out that there was a connection between what I was developing here in uh, South Australia under the SACA visa, but also there was a connection between what he was developing and my, um, my industry, which is hospitality. So, uh, first, uh, I would like to know a little bit about you, Pascal, if you would like to say something about you as a person. Yep. Like, I think you said to me, you are 27. Oh my God, you're 27. Yeah. I'm 40. Whoa. And then the, again, you are under the SSA visa and you are the uh, CEO of this uh, business is called Job Spotter. Absolutely. Okay. So, Tell so, something about you. Yeah, um, let's, let's start from the very beginning. Um, originally from Germany, uh, like Simone said, here in the Caesar Visa, as well as Simone is here. And actually the business is called JobSpotter. But why we have chosen JobSpotter, um, uh, probably start early on. Um, I grew up in a yeah, very hospitality heavy um, childhood. My father, he, um, put a, his, uh, he chosen his career as a professional um, chef started working in, in a very local restaurant or yeah, I would, I would call it restaurant and ended up um, up to a three-star Michelin chef in the kitchen of Gira in France. Wow. So I've seen um, the, the whole lot um, and yeah, actually grew up with a big, big background in hospitality, has been working in hospitality um, to earn a few extra bucks. And also my father now is running a fish and deli shop. So all the peak seasons, Christmas and, and New Year's Eve actually makes one third of our yearly income of mm -hmm. the shop. And obviously it's a, a family run business and means for us, we, all the kids, when we are available, we gonna help obviously. So yeah, the hospitality part, um, I'm having a strong background, never chosen professional career in there. I have other interests, I love it as a hobby and love to, to work every now and then. Um, but the background is there. And JobSpotter, the initial idea of JobSpotter was, um, I was here in Australia, myself a backpacker, seven years ago the first time. And when I was here, I was working in hospitality and in some areas really struggled to find jobs. And after having had this experience for a while, um, I was talking or started chatting to, to employers and they told me it's quite hard to find the right skilled staff and also um, like. finding the, the right stuff in a large number of applications. So that's how the idea of JobSpot arose because I had the issue myself. I know the other industry, which we're talking at the moment with a focus on hotels, proper hotels here in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, that's how we started. And I just love the industry and I love having people around me cooking and, and having yeah, nice experiences, um, good wine, good food. Yeah, it's laughing and because I generally go with good wine and, yeah. uh, and good food. So we, we, uh, we have uh, some connection, as I yeah. said previously. So yeah. um, that's working together because um, I know the industry, I like the industry and I've seen the other side um, from the job seeker side. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, that's how we ended up and want to work on it and finding a solution. Okay, so that is interesting. Well, it's... Uh, that's, that is bringing in uh, one of the a previous episodes that I had um, in the Radio Italiano del Aide in uh, Agri Adventures program, which was an, an um, examination of hospitality uh, as a market. So I, I've been, after these you know, 24 years of experience working in the industry, uh, 
five different countries in which I've been working at least one year per country, I, had, I come out with a, a sort of um, key or a sort of um, system of recognize where are the problems and uh, why try to figure it out why are these problems in my industry which is hospitality and I come out that, that you have the three main stakeholders which are uh, the market itself and then you have the uh, labor force which is the one that probably you are the focus the most and then uh, you have uh, businesses uh, that they are making the, the, the third part which is the distribution of businesses on the market and when I've been doing the examination of the South Australian market I come out with a big problem in correlation with uh, a labor force um, for what I've seen uh, over here the problem is that labor force uh, it's um, like generally the higher number they are using hospitality just to collect um, some pocket money or just to pay for the studies and uh, they are coming from a different background and they are looking to exit hospitality in a short period of time going in a direction of something that is more uh, feasible in terms of money. Uh, another big difference I found from here for instance and uh, the, um, the market in Italy is that an average uh, wage in Australia in terms of working in hospitality even though it's, um, it's higher than what it is in Italy but in comparison to the average in Australia it's low, much lower. So uh, it's kind of difficult to work in hospitality and be dedicated when uh, uh, your course, the, you know, your peers at school, they are working in another industry, they are, take, they are getting double amount of money that you are having and uh, you are working Fridays and Saturdays and then you're working uh, uh, split shifts and then they call you in at the uh, last minute which are uh, making this market from the point of view of the, uh, the, the, the businesses um, difficult to manage from both sides and uh, the other the third problem that I've seen it is difficulty on being recognized as a, a professional so what I mean is that um, if I go and I work in uh, or I, I say to uh, people that I am a sommelier in Italy people is like whoa you're mm. a sommelier so it's something cool um, while over here they look at me and they say oh you put wine yep, yep. so what's the difficult thing behind and that's obviously for someone that has knowledge and spent a lot of time studying and learning uh, it's uh, demotivating like you notice the people over here has not the interest to learn uh, about the wine or at least the many people obviously there is always someone is interested in wine and always a good questions which is lovely but in comparison the percentage of people that is recognizing your skills over here is lower than the one that uh, I've seen in Italy and other countries. So this is quite broad and yep. that is what the findings that I found in connection with labor force. Um, what do you think um, and this is why I'm here today is because I would like to uh, ask uh, Pascal um, what what he thinks he could do or at least could help to solve in terms of turnover yeah. like how do you think your uh, business project your uh, business will help to fix this uh, high turnover over here yeah um, I think one one of the issues why there is a high turnover is um, the the current solutions of hiring people um, we have interviewed quite a few pubs and hotels here and the, the results turned out to be they received for a single job advertisement between just under 100 um, applications up to 500 applications and usually um, wow. the manager has to sift through the, all the applicants and it's very time consuming as you can imagine mm -hmm. so if you, it depends on how much stuff you have to manage and obviously the manager's job is not just sifting through applications um, they have to run the daily business and are super busy with the daily business because hospitality is um, a very time-consuming business. You, you don't have regular hours usually, you don't have um, five days work and, and two days off on the weekend. Um, it's, so. it's the whole week around. And I think one, one of the issues in the area is that they don't spend the time to really do a deep background check or um, 
caring deeply about the stuff because having 500 um, you can't have a detailed look at 500 resumes it's just impossible no. No. not if you having a team of 15 20 and if it's more even um, there's no chance so i think that is one of the issues um, of the turnover that they might take the first best um, uh, to say this carefully mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not that everyone does it i'm, I'm pretty sure some have a very good um, uh, way of hiring but a lot of them they probably struggle to find the right fit within uh, those um, amounts of, of applications if mm -hmm. that makes sense another thing is the turnover um, uh, here in australia i have the feeling that people uh, like you said before are more doing the job because of earning a few extra bucks because they're studying so um, which is fine because some or the the industry heavily relies on peak season which is coming up now and for the peak season you need some stuff which are here for a short period for the peak season after that you don't need them anymore exactly. also a lot of them they um, heavily rely on casual stuff so um, we had venues interviewing um, they had up to 90 percent of the front of house stuff on a casual basis so and there you as, as it's very um, flexible industry where you have you never know how much work there's actually coming up um, you can say well it's a nice day um, I think today it's going to be super busy and it turns out it's not busy at all yep. so you, you're calling staff in and paying them but you don't need them and casual stuff um, especially students they're quite happy to do flexible especially if you have more on the books mm -hmm. um, but doesn't make it better with the turnover obviously no absolutely. i think the turnover the the tricky thing is about finding people who are committed to the hospitality industry um, because that's the only way um, hospitality for me is like okay you choose it once and um, most of them they stick because they they are highly passionate they even enjoy working at night time they enjoy interacting with people they just love it um, it's probably about finding them um, who are passionate about and matching them into a team because for me um, I don't think it's just hospitality especially in hospitality it's more important but also in other um, special industries um, it doesn't matter where it is if you have a team you like to work in um, you're happy to take on tasks or doing over, over hours exactly. more likely than if you don't like the team and in hospitality it's even more important because the customer sees you, faces you, and the customer pretty quickly realizes, um, well, this team is working pretty well together, or this team, there's something, um, they, they have some um, dispute in, in the team. Exactly. And I think when you, when when we achieve to match people based on the personal traits, on, on their characteristics, on their hobbies, passions, into a team with like-minded people, that's a way how you can reduce the turnover and also, um, I would probably, if I would try as a venue manager, I would probably ask the staff itself because me as a manager, um, if I was a manager, I haven't done all the kind of jobs. So how should I, or how could I judge he's the right person for this job? Um, rather than asking people who are doing the same job and say, well, what do you think? Um, just asking the opinion and then uh, if you do this you also show the stuff hey I trust you um, your opinion is important to me mm -hmm. um, you you're valuable to our business so it's a win-win situation uh, the manager gets the opinion of someone who does the job and is a professional in the job and also the staff gets hey um, the manager appreciates my opinion that's pretty cool and um, gives me some confidence because he, so he likes what I'm doing you just gave me an idea I could work with you to select the staff because I've been working in the industry for 24 years, so that will be a good abs thing. Abs absolutely. And anyway, that's I was, a, bit, a bit the digression of the topic. I, I had the thought before because, I mean, um, uh, for me, I, I do have background in, in hospitality, but nothing compared to you. How mm -hmm. much? 20 years in, in hospitality? 24. 24. 24. Um, now 25, but, you know, that's uh, getting it's, crazy. It's a tiny bit difference. It's almost as old as I am. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. definitely. To, to see, okay, what do you think? Get, get a second opinion and see. Okay, yeah. so, uh, well... The, I like because in the end, speaking about problem, the big turnover, you ended speaking about uh, developing teams, which is something that I came out as solution to the same problem in the, this episode that I had, which is, uh, to me, in my opinion, a business is they will have to work more on develop a team in, in order to face the problems together because uh, when you have a, a good team, you have a chances to improve their, uh, their productivity. 
yep. and improving productivity uh, for them means have better satisfaction, have more hours of work, and then when it comes to peak season, you add one extra person and the team works smooth like oil, you're gonna have a super working uh, um, place. While when you do not Absolutely. develop a team, especially here in, in South Australia, easily you have people working only for money yeah. and when they work they only fix the problem that they have to fix because they are job position. So I, I've been managing a cellar door in McLaren Vale for two years and my problem as you were said it was when I was sending out a quest for one extra person I was receiving 40, 50, 100 requirements and that I was located in the countryside yeah. which is low considering to be in, in, a, in, in Adelaide it's and massive and uh, over there I, I really struggle to have the right person to put in the team more than having a worker. Having worker, somebody want to come in and be paid mm. for working Saturday, Sunday, it's easy. But to have a person that is more interested on what they do, it's a challenge over here. Yeah, That's probably uh, something that working on that, you will really simplify the managers, uh, managers uh, on their selection. Absolutely. Which is really cool. And I think um, this, this approach is more a long-term thing because if, if you find a well working together team, um, it ends up in happier patrons and uh, more five star ratings. And yeah, just people will talk about, well, it was, was great, not just the food was great. Actually, the team was pretty cool. I, I had the feeling they enjoyed being there and not just doing it for, for earning money. Yeah. And I think one, uh, one of the, the approaches we easily can take just here in South Australia, there are per year um, two and a half to three thousand skilled migrants. So they come here with a permanent residency visa um, uh, in some different occupations. And a lot of them, they actually are in the hospitality mm. like management, chefs and those kind of things. Um, difficult thing is how to match them. They, they want to work, but they don't know where to go. Um, they're wasting a lot of money, um, not money really, but a lot of time to, to find out, okay, what's, what's the space or uh, a venue I want to work for yeah. and the venues they most of them probably don't even know about this kind of visa um, so they they have full work rights they have living rights they can stay long term they're just looking for jobs basically um, yeah and for the employers it's not a, a big there's no trouble at all no cost involved they can just employ them and go absolutely absolutely okay uh, well the second question was uh, how to solve a problem in terms of reliability of workers, but I believe we already spoke about it. Because yeah, it's, it's probably the, the team structure, um, uh, reliability, finding people who are passionate, um, I believe, and yeah, who, who are committed to the industry. Mm -hmm. and, and to the business. To, absolutely, to the, to the business, um, uh, yeah. identifying with the business, with the business values, um, with the manager. Uh, quite often, uh, here you're not choosing or you shouldn't choose the the business itself more like your your boss where you can who can the family that fa you have family. around yeah the absolutely. family that you have around who gives you the confidence and pushes you to further to develop and and um, grow in your position and also gives you the trust i think trust is very important um, to give people trust absolutely. Um, in every business for example we now have a, a student working for us and I'm not taking him by the hand and say that's what you do and that's how you do it. Um, we give him the trust and say, well, um, we ideally want to have this result and work back from the result what needs to be done to get the result to, to achieve what we need to. And then we have a look over and say, well, um, maybe a bit different, but he can do it and works well at the moment. So we're quite happy because he appreciates the trust we give him. He can bring in, uh, in his own ideas because even though I've done this kind of work much longer than he did um, or he's a bit different uh, profession than I have but kind of business thing um, I still can learn a lot of things from him because he has different approaches every person is different and absolutely different mentality which is going to show you uh, other side of uh, the problems and possible and solutions if, if we start active listening to other people we can learn a lot um, it doesn't matter what kind of age or profession they have okay so the third question was um, more connected with uh, the, the third problem which was the uh, recognition so how to be recognized on the market as professional mm. what do you think you could do like what could do your company yep. on uh, solving this um, problem 
Um, it's, it's at the moment not the first issue or the, the first challenge we're targeting um, long term, definitely. But I think, um, I don't know how we can help with this, this challenge. Um, probably that's something I see AgriAdventures actually um, helping this challenge because mm. for me, coming from Europe, um, we have a strong food culture, a long food culture, where here in Australia there's not that much of a strong and long um, developed food culture. Mm -hmm. We have um, here in Adelaide, quite fortunate, um, great wines, great vineyards, and I have the feeling they appreciate high quality food. It's kind of a change and um, that people are more going back to, okay, I appreciate organic food, um, good quality produce and things. Mm -hmm. um, how I believe AgriAdventure um, can help this industry to uh, get recognition is your approach is bringing tourists to areas, to yeah. hospitality. Yeah. And if you have tourists from um, another area, one example would be my father. He for sure will come one day visiting mm -hmm. me here with a strong background in food and, and wine knowledge. And he would definitely... That's going to be a massacre. Yeah. <laughs> he, it's going to be a he, massacre. If, if He's going to he, go around with, the, you know, with the chopper. He's yeah, going to chop that's, people that's because that's what happened over there. Like we are so passionate about what we do that when you see something done wrong, you get crazy. I said, what are you doing? I mean, that's not the way you do it. He's, he's so committed to the industry. Um, mm. He loves it. And so he definitely, if he sees someone doing a great job, doesn't matter um, if it's uh, a waitstaff or a sommelier or a chef who has done um, a great job. Um, he always gives very good tips because he appreciated it when, when he was on in, in the other side. Mm. So, and that's when, when you um, bring these tourists to the places, um, uh, with the background, because I believe your your main customer, your main attraction, hopefully will be people who appreciate it, um, to have high quality produce, have high quality wine, and and are interested not just in, in going there and having a feast and, and some drinks, but really know about the background and those kind of things. And these people will appreciate the good work of the hospitality staff in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then in the future, I believe, as I see a tend to, to a change in the industry um, mm -hmm. a little bit, that people are more aware of, of the hospitality. It's going to be a long-term goal, mm -hmm. but I think um, it's, it's a start happening where people, I mean, we, we have a cheesery here in the hills, just won uh, the world award of the best cheese. Um, mm -hmm. you yes, I've been uh, Chris um, Lloyd for Woodside Cheese. Then uh, we have three vineyards in South Australia who have been voted within the best 50 um, uh, vineyard experiences. Yes. So there's a lot to offer. This is Dardenberg with a cube and uh, other two that I don't remember, sorry. Um, Penfolds, one, one of well, them. Penfolds, Penfolds is probably the only wine that I know uh, uh, when I was working in Italy in, uh, in the uh, yeah. wine bar. Crazy. Yeah. And I think um, those, those things, um, uh, those awards or recognitions um, gives the state some kind where they can be proud of what they have and I think it's a great place yes. for good food and, and wine and after losing the, the car manufacturing here in, in South Australia which was a, a huge um, throwback mm -hmm. for, for yeah, employment, um, I think they, they if, if we focus here on what we or what the, the community is good at, what they can do, um, the people are more appreciate and recognize hey we, we have something we can be proud of. Um, and that's definitely food and wine here yeah. because there, there is good quality. And if the change happens, what I believe um, can happen, um, that people see, well, um, it's not just a little Adelaide. There's a lot to see, a lot to offer. Mm. Um, let's be proud of oh, what so we have. Oh, there is so much. Yeah. And might be a change there where we say, okay, if we show the world that's great here, um, people here start to be proud of what they have and appreciate, okay, hospitality is not that easy because if you've been on the other side, you know what it's like. Um, customers don't see it because well-trained stuff always has a smile and um, doesn't show when it's busy. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think that might be a change where people start to be more proud of, of this industry, of what we are good at here. Gives me or gives me the, the hope that there is a future for this industry. Okay, so um, what's the situation at the moment of your company? Like, what's happening? Yeah, so for us, um, uh, we had an idea how we can help the industry, but the reality... Oh, sorry, I forgot. Uh, how many people that work? Like, uh, it's just you? Uh, yep, yep. Is it a company? What is it based? Yep. Is it here? Is it in, uh, in Germany? Yeah. 
So um, uh, we uh, we are founding team of three. So I, I do have two co-founders um, and then me, obviously. We have one student here um, in, in this space from Flinders University is, and we have two more developers um, back in Austria. They working on a casual basis when, when we need them. So that's, that's us and we have one office in Munich and then uh, we have the office here in, in the ICC. So that's the two spots because okay. um, Germany was, we started with the, the project in Germany. I came here to Australia last year, then in September. Um, I did a pre-accelerator in Sydney and ended up on the Caesar visa here in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. And yeah, quite happy to, to be here. I think it's a great spot. And for us, I believe it's a good industry and um, the hospitality, especially hotels industry to start with and also a nice area to start with, with Adelaide. Mm, yeah, considering the size, <coughs> considering the position Absolutely. of the market. Also, in the, one of the previous episodes, I've been speaking about the markets and problems correlated with the market itself, the size of Australian market. But for you, that you're starting a company dealing with uh, 1 million and, and uh, 200,000 people focused, yeah. concentrated in one mm. city is much better than dealing with, you know, the same amount, but concentrated in uh, spread all over, you know, yeah. 100 cities. So that's Absolutely. much better. So, uh, we were speaking about a little bit at the company stage and uh, are you already working? So, are you yeah, so making some money or how you... For, for us, um, at the moment, it's really because, like I just said before, um, what we come up with um, is what we believe is, is great fit for, for the industry. But for us, it's to, to understand, okay, what is really the challenges? Because um, if you're building a tech product, it's quite common that you come up with assumptions and after going to market, um, they get proven wrong, your assumptions. You, that's just normal, um, just what happens. Yeah. And so we... Sorry, while you're speaking, I'm going to fix the yeah, light. It does decide to turn off um, because it doesn't like us. So for us, it's really about um, doing the research and asking the venues, hey, I want to know exactly your challenges and not coming, hey, I have a solution for your problem because I don't know their problem. So it's for me... Okay, really good approach. who has which problems? Can we see patterns? And it seems like um, the hotel industry definitely uh, have the biggest challenges for uh, uh, what we identified so far. So we dig deeper into this area. Um, after doing the research and knowing the challenges, we started to modifying our product a little bit because um, that's their needs. I, I don't want to go there and sell them something uh, which doesn't serve the needs and, and uh, solve the challenges. So Absolutely. this step, um, uh, still having a few interviews and we're just on to finish our last um, changes with the product. Mm -hmm. And after finish it, finishing it, I'm um, actually going back to the venues I've interviewed because after they told me the challenges, I know the challenges and I know I can solve them. So I ask in the end, um, are you happy for me to come back with our solution and show you what we come up with and jump on a trial with us? Yeah. And then together with you, we develop the ideal product because we rely on your feedback to build a product you love. Otherwise, I don't know your challenges, your daily business, they, they change, obviously. And for us, it's Absolutely. important to get the, the um, uh, constant feedback to see, okay, what's changed? What's your challenge now? How can we support you that mm -hmm. you have your life made easier and focus on what you're supposed to do with the business? And okay. So there's, um, at the moment, this stage, um, the first paid trials coming up. Yeah, that's... So you can do that without working? Without working. Lucky, he's a lucky guy. I have no, to work for, no, for, for developing what no, I'm doing. No, not really. Not so really working with, off working. the business, I mean. You're oh, working yeah. hard, yeah, yeah. but you're working off the business. <clears throat> Absolutely. So um, I'm, I'm quite lucky, fortunate that we uh, had a, a great founding team. Um, who everyone put money in. Obviously, we're investing some money in, in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm drawing my salary. It's not much anyway, but I don't need much. We live in the paradise here, so I can be happy close to the beach. Um, it doesn't cost me anything, um, except a bit more rent I'm paying because I'm living close to the beach, but I'm happy <laughs> to pay because it's a great, Absolutely. great way to uh, relax and enjoy life after work. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm quite fortunate in, in this position I am that my co-founders give me the trust that I'm doing my job properly so we can focus really on the business and on the customer challenges and not have to work like you on, on the side. Yeah, it's, it's so what I see is there is a kind of 
trust on trust on trust on trust like you're providing trust to uh, the people is working with you and your uh, co-founders on the other side of the planet they're placing trust on you for what yep. you're doing that is probably the great way to develop a, a, a business and make it sustainable so what are the biggest uh, uh, challenges you are facing so far i think the um, one of the biggest challenges Previously, uh, we were facing, we thought pubs here in Adelaide would be a very good fit for us. Okay. Which was, or turned out to be a wrong assumption. Um, we thought it's good because they have a lot of staff. Um, they have higher turnover than a little cafe, but turned out not being a perfect fit because they can utilize their own network pretty well. Because the staff, they still can manage with friends of friends, uh, friends of staff, friends of family. So it was okay. one one challenge for us to identify, okay, which market is a good market for us in the beginning to, to really solve a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and the next challenge, because approaching the pubs for an interview is pretty easy. You, you walk in and most of the time, or a lot of time, you're actually facing the manager yourself because they're still working in the business, um, pouring the beers. Exactly. Um, so you, you you're directly, German, so yeah. it's going to be a perfect match. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> so you basically facing the, the person you want to talk to for the interview straight away because the manager is obviously um, responsible for the hiring as well. Whereas if you're approaching bigger hotels like like the Hilton here, Intercontinental, Majestic Group, um, Stamford, just to name a few, um, you walk in and you're facing the receptionist. So you have the first gatekeeper and say, well, um, I'm Pascal and that's what we're doing. Um, I'd like to talk to someone who is responsible in the HR department for recruiting. And they say, well, give us a call or send an email. Um, uh, and these it people, is my problem. And these, these people, yeah. they are busy, obviously, because of the problems we've been talking before, um, up to 500 applications. Yes. So getting the time um, or getting them to agree for an interview for, for our research is much harder than getting the pubs. Um, but we we worked our way through and um, did some some interviews already. Mm -hmm. um, one tomorrow coming up and one on Friday. And with this data, we basically want to back up what we've heard so far to see. Okay, um, there are definitely patterns in the industry, and if there are patterns, I say, well, that's a market where where we can be sustainable and, and survive and earn money, mm -hmm. and definitely add the value and, and help this this industry. And that's probably the biggest challenge, I think. Um, <clears throat> to to get the time from someone in the HR department who is responsible um, and yeah simplify their work which is something that is uh, or yeah. at least help them to be more focused on the right candidates instead yep. than uh, using a lot of energy on the candidates that they are applying only because they are applying extra things actually something yeah. happened to me too I had a lot of people they were applying on the job <coughs> position only because they were sh were having to show they were applying yeah because you for know Centrelink that for Centrelink yeah. so that is another problem that I never had to face uh, overseas which is they're just sending that and then when you try to get in contact they seems that they want but they are not and they make it difficult so you you yep. waste a lot of time yeah absolutely so what do you look for the future? What are you thinking in terms of business, in terms of yourself? Like what's your vision? What do you want to be in before the, the visa ends? Because we have two years of time left, huh? Yeah, it's scary. Two, two, two and a, not, not yeah, two, two and a quarter, I think. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm trying to so, get less because it helped me to yeah. you know, be quick. So what do I want to achieve um, uh, in this two years we have left? So I want to really understand more of the market we have a deep understanding but um, the, the industry is changing i want to be in uh, contact with people we are serving all the time so mm -hmm. that's building a relationship with them and say well we we're here to help you we're here to solve your challenges your problems mm -hmm. we're experts in what we're doing mm -hmm. um, give us some of your time and and we will modify or steadily improve our service for you um, and building basically a product which not just can help Adelaide here, but also other cities in other countries. Mm -hmm. So building a, a scalable business um, which can help the industry around the world, ideally. Um, okay. That's probably not doable within two years, but building the base here and, and testing um, the market and solving the problems here because also different areas have different challenges as we had before the industry in Italy Absolutely. is totally different to the Absolutely. industry here in Adelaide um, or Australia. So <coughs> to see 
understand um, is it from country to Adelaide uh, different or is it from Adelaide to Melbourne and Sydney also different? Um, that's the things I want to find out and um, see how we can help all of the, the hotel industries in, in the country first and then overseas. Mm -hmm. Okay, well it's a good, it's a good challenge building, uh, but also it's a good vision. Build, building a, a platform for hotels actually that they make making their life easier in recruiting um, around the globe with mm -hmm. Yeah, some some features. Um, not not going into detail now, but no, 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 um, no, no, no. That's fine. Yeah. That's okay. Well, actually, what <coughs> I was thinking, and uh, when I got in, uh, in contact with Pascal the last time, it was also uh, to um, help farmers and food producers uh, to uh, uh, get in contact with um, seasonal workers because that's another problem that uh, I've, I've seen in uh, what, I've, what I've been managing, but also I've seen um, for the size of Australia, for the problems that the agriculture is facing over here. So now I don't know if Pascal will work on that, but what we can do together actually is trying to gather information from farms and see if there is a problem to solve. Yes, absolutely. Because that could be something useful for, uh, <laughs> for them and probably for your business too because if Absolutely. there is enough then it could be something interesting to move in yeah so it's, it's definitely an industry which is interesting to have a look at and for us it's very interesting and, and important to understand the challenges so if there are people out there um, with challenges i want to know exactly what the challenges are um, mm -hmm. if i know the challenges i can see okay how is, is there a way we could help them now or how can we help them in the future? So for the people that's listening to us on uh, the radio, the Radio Italia, Radio Italia Uno and the Light, uh, if they will have any questions yes. uh, in regard to your uh, business project, where could they get in contact with you? The best probably is sending an email or if you want to provide them with my phone number, you, you have it, you can give it to them. But my email, if someone is interested in getting in touch, um, is pascal, so P-A-S-C-A-L, at jobspotter.com. So J-O-B-S-P-O-T-T-R, without an E, dot com. Okay, so that's a good thing. Also, um, there will be soon an update on the uh, Agri Adventures website, where there will be um, a sort of booking calendar and a description of your business in order to allow um, uh, people visiting the website yep. to get in contact with you for the same purpose. And uh, sorry, I'm just going back on. Uh, so for who will be interested, they can even send an email to info at radiounadelaide.com.au asking for Pascal connection and I can refer um, to him and to you. So for the people that have been following us on the YouTube channel, channel thank you very much for watching us. And um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this video. I hope that the audio was not so terrible, but uh, that's what it could do for the moment. And uh, please like and subscribe and uh, leave your comments because more comments better for both because we Absolutely. can understand better, right? <laughs> yep. And uh, for the people listening from the radio, thank you very much. Grazie mille. Uh, you cannot see us, non ci potete vedere, però eh, è stata un'intervista molto interessante. Un saluto da el, oh, scusatemi. Un saluto dal Innovation Collaboration Center. Thank you very much from the Innovation Collaboration Center uh, Adelaide, which is the uh, SA University. And uh, we'll see you next time with the Radio Italia 1 Adelaide and Ag Adventures. Grazie mille Pascal. Thank you very much Pascal. Pleasure. And, uh, prego? Uh, how do you say in Italy? Prego? Uh, uh, prego, prego, prego is perfect. Yeah, perfect. And uh, see you next time. I see you still climbing. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, um, may maybe for the end, please please get in touch if there's any questions. I, I want to really know if there's some farmers out there or hotels um, about your challenges. Um, we want to solve the problems. We will solve the problems. Um, it's just getting the information what the real challenges are. That's the most important for us to ah. be able to offer the solution for it. Absolutely, I agree 100%. Ciao!